the hell is that? A dress. Says who? Calvin Klein. It looks like underwear. Costume is one of the main components in storytelling. A film can be read via costume, whether it's overtly or subtextual. On its own, a costume can tell the audience the status of a character, and this helps them understand how they should feel about them. Costumes are woven into the narrative and can give the audience mental cues about how the film is going. They need to be subtle, but still appeal to the subconscious. A character's costume is chosen very carefully and plays an essential, but seemingly quiet, role in making a film memorable. For example, a victim is made to look innocent and weak and therefore creates an emotional attachment for the viewer. The conventional clothing a victim will wear is from a basic colour palette including yellows, blues, pinks, browns and whites. These colours are typically associated with infants and innocence. My aim was to successfully design, develop and construct a costume that reflects the character and genre of film. So after researching into the horror genre, I came to the conclusion that the best representation of a conventional costume that clearly reflects the genre is the final girl character. The final girl is one of the most recognised characters in the horror genre. She is innocent and smart and most likely a virgin. She remains fully clothed throughout and avoids death by sex. He has been so patient with me. You know, with all the sex stuff, how many guys will put up with a girlfriend who's sexually anorexic? This particular character is distinguishable not just by her appearance and personality, but by the way she is dressed too. She is the one that is fully dressed with not much skin showing, therefore making her seem more like a child. She also takes on the typical victim colours that I have described. I started with designing my costume and opting to use the yellow and blue and white colour palette, as this would best reflect the innocence of the final girl. I decided to go with clothes that will cover the actress but still keep her looking like a young woman, hence the costume including a white tank top with frills to add the childish innocence to the character and a yellow cardigan and blue jeans. I then had to learn how to use the equipment I would be using for my project. This involved watching videos and practicing on bits of fabric. I had to learn how to use the machine safely and effectively, making sure I put the safety switch on when I wasn't using it. It became very frustrating while learning to use it to make sure I got the right pressure on the button or feeding the fabric through so it didn't snag or skip stitches or pull the thread with it. Next I had to measure my actress so I could make the clothes fit to her body type. I had to find out exactly what I needed to measure for the clothes to fit in this way. So this was her sleeve length, bust and hips for the top and cardigan, and waist, thigh width and leg length for the trousers. I began the making of my project by measuring and marking out where I needed to cut my fabric. I then put it up against the top of the same size that fit the model to ensure I had the measurements right. I then cut the sides off and the bottom. The next step was tacking the fabric together with a needle and thread. I decided to tack because after previously using pins, I discovered the pins got in the way and stuck on the sewing machine causing it to steer off course. I then proceeded to sew the seams with the sewing machine. The machine ended up skipping stitches, so I had to go back and hand stitch where the missing stitches were to ensure the seam would hold. I needed to see how the top fit on the actress and if I needed to make any adjustments so I had her try it on for me. I also needed to see how I had to cut the straps and neckline in. The trousers were an existing item of clothing that I fixed and adapted to fit. This included bringing them up several inches to fit proper in the legs. Following this, I had her try on the cardigan, which was bought to size, but the arms were slightly too long, so I opted to roll them up as the fabric is wool, and cutting it would cause it to unravel. Afterwards, I cut the top straps to size, 
and cut the neckline in. I then hemmed the bottom of the shirt. I started by ironing it over to keep the fabric folded and then went in with the sewing machine, which evidently again skipped stitches. So I again went in by hand with a needle and thread. I decided to add in ruffles to the shirt as the hemming of the neckline did not go to plan and so it needed adjusting. Overall, the ruffles added more to the costume as it added to the virginal innocence of the final girl character. I made up my own way of doing the ruffles by folding over the fabric and sewing it. I hit many problems with the ruffles coming undone. The thread would knot itself or the stitching wasn't tight enough, but it was not very hard to overcome. I then added this to the top and pinned and hand sewed it on. The top was finished, so the next step was to bring up the trousers, which I measured to ensure I got the right length. I then cut off the excess fabric and pinned and began sewing. The costume was then fully complete. I then had the actress try on the full costume before filming. I was very happy with it as it was exactly what I imagined it to be and I successfully made the costume to fit to the desired effect.